cue the game show music. It's time for a pop quiz. Which one of these dogs is a Labradoodle? I'll give you a moment to think about it. All right, the answer might surprise you. All of them. Yes, all of these dogs are Labradoodles. Look at how different they are, despite being a mix of the same two breeds, Labrador and Poodle. And if they look different, imagine how different they are in terms of temperament. Now, I want you to keep this little quiz in mind as we talk about doodles today. I think you're gonna be surprised by some of what I have to share. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. We are up to number three in the series of Deep Dive into Dog Breeds. Today, we're gonna to talk all about doodles. Did you happen to notice an error in what I just said? It's actually probably more of a nitpicky thing that only dog trainers would notice, but doodles are not a dog breed. Doodles are a mix of two dog breeds, but unfortunately, they often get marketed as a breed of their own, which could lead to some challenges along the way especially when it comes to owner expectations. Now, we're gonna be talking about all that today, along with some super interesting information about grooming doodles, how to best train doodles, and what kind of behavior you might see from your doodle. Now, I'm gonna share with you the good and the not so good. <laughs> Before we noodle on doodles, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notified when my next video goes live. I know you're gonna love it. Okay, so doodle owners, I'm gonna warn you, you're probably not gonna like everything I have to say today, but I know you rely on me to be honest and tell you the real deal about puppy raising topics. And today is no exception. So just please don't come at me in the comment section, okay? Now, I'm not going to insult your dog specifically, but I have a few things I need to share with my viewers about doodles. You might agree, or you might say that your dog is different, and that's okay. Just be nice. So you're probably aware that there are tons of types of doodles. The Golden Doodle, which is a golden retriever and poodle mix, was the most popular type of doodle in the US in 2021, according to Rover.com. Now the Labradoodle, which is a mix of the poodle and the Labrador retriever, is the second most popular doodle. Now essentially a doodle is any type of dog bred with a poodle. Now you can imagine the options are endless. Now the first doodles were bred in Australia in the 1980s. Now a gentleman by the name of Wally Conron was trying to create a guide dog for the blind woman whose husband was allergic to dogs. Now he succeeded, but he's got some strong words about it, including some regret. Hold on to your hat because we're gonna dig in more on that topic in just a minute. First, let's talk about the physical characteristics of most doodles. Now, although they are on the larger size, they are pretty light in stature, which makes them a good size for a family dog. Now, many people think they're the perfect Goldilocks size. Not too small to get lost in the shuffle, but not a 100 pound muscle dog who comes barreling at you. Now, although Wally Conrad had a good idea to breed two popular dogs together to make a hypoallergenic one, I have a big warning for you. Doodles are not necessarily hypoallergenic. Labradoodles and golden doodles are often popular because they're sold as hypoallergenic, non-shedding, and odor-free. These attributes attract many allergy sufferers. The truth is, no dog is totally hypoallergenic. The cause of the allergy reaction varies from one person to another. You might be allergic to just one part of the dog, but not the other. So for example, I'm actually allergic to dander and dog saliva. Yes, me, <laughs> a dog trainer. I got a purebred poodle, Wesley, for the best chance of having a dog that didn't profoundly impact my allergies. However, even if you have a purebred poodle, like I do, it may not be totally hypoallergenic. Now, the only way to truly determine if you can tolerate a dog is to get the dog and have a trial period to see if you have any reactions. I've got further bad news for you though. The amount of dander a dog produces could change over time. So even if the dog does not cause any reaction at first, it might cause a reaction in the future. Sorry, Charlie, that probably wasn't what you wanted to hear. Bottom line, if you are allergic to dogs, but want a dog, consult an allergist not a breeder about your options. I once worked with a client who had a doodle. We were working on some of the basics of training when one day she called to cancel the session. 
and all the rest of the sessions after that. She told me that they had discovered her child, who was allergic to dogs, was showing a strong allergic reaction to this dog. She specifically got a doodle thinking it would be okay, even though her son was allergic, but it didn't work out and they were devastated to give the dog up. I felt really sad for them, so I wanted you to avoid the same fate if you need a dog who's hypoallergenic. Since we're talking about fur, let's talk about how to groom these fuzzy creatures. Grooming is going to be a big part of your life if you have a doodle, so I want you to be prepared for it. First things first, you want to find a groomer as soon as you know you're going to be bringing a doodle home. Groomers are in high demand right now and often have appointments booked out for months. Some canine professionals say that this is partly due to the rise in popularity of the doodles. Groomers are super busy. I know from experience. Now, I recently needed to switch groomers because my usual groomer stopped doing big dogs like Wesley, my standard poodle. It took me weeks to find one that would take my dogs and that I was only moderately happy with with the results. But Wesley was long overdue for a groom. Now, the longer I waited, the more I risked him getting mad and the more my allergies kicked in because of all the dander. Doodles must be groomed frequently and this can be expensive, so you must budget accordingly. Most groomers start out at about $100 for any doodle. Now, when Wesley had his grooming appointment the other day, I paid $175. It was a mobile groomer, which was convenient for me, and I felt like it would be a better experience for Wesley. It was both of those things, but it's also something you have to plan for in the budget. In addition to regular and expensive grooming appointments, in order to make the most out of your grooming, you need to brush your doodle at home regularly. <laughs> I'm talking a once a day at least, or at least every other. You should check on this video here about the best way to introduce the brushing process to your dog as well as the grooming tools I recommend. Then the comb that I mentioned in that video would be great to use on a doodle. And if you're doing it right, it should go through their fur smoothly like butter. <laughs> Once you've found a groomer that you trust, you can also ask their advice for how often you should brush your dog. Just be sure to do it as they suggest or they might fire you as a client. Now, if you're not sure where to start looking for a groomer, we suggest you use the directory to see if there are any fear-free trained groomers in your area. Okay, just one more tip about the grooming doodles before we move on. Doodles have a double coat, which means they have a top coat and an undercoat. Mats form easily when loose hair gets tangled. Mats are more likely to form in places that you rarely brush. Mats can be painful and worse, they can trap bacteria which is why daily brushing is so important. Whatever you do, don't try to cut the matted hair. You might end up cutting the skin accidentally. Leave that work to your groomer. Always comb through the mats before washing your dog because water tends to make them tighter. All right, let's review this picture of Wesley for a guide to the brushing of your doodle. Now the red area should be brushed first and most often. This is the most common area where mats form. The yellow zone is the second priority. Mats can form here too, but not as often as the red zone. Now the green zone is the last priority for brushing because it doesn't mat as often. So I think you heard me on the importance of grooming. Now let's get into the controversy about doodles. Now maybe you haven't heard of it, but in the professional dog circle, like the vets, the groomers, and the trainers, we talk a lot about doodles. Now I'm not gonna lie, Professionals are not overly fond of this mix. Even the guy who created the first doodle for his blind client said that creating the mixed breed was one of his life's regrets. I opened a Pandora's box and released a Frankenstein monster. The creator, Wally Conran said, now I find that the biggest majority are either crazy or have a hereditary problem. Instead of breeding out the problems, clueless and unscrupulous breeders are breeding them in. For every perfect one, you're gonna find a lot of crazy ones. Remember what I said. Don't come at me in the comments. It's not that doodles are inherently bad. They really aren't. It's that the owners often have expectations that can't really be met when you're getting a mixed breed puppy. And breeders often suggest expectations that may or may not be met. Labradoodles and Golden Doodles and Aussie Doodles, they're not purebred. And when you start to mix breeds, you end up with a wild card of what you're gonna get. Sorry, doodle owners, but you're rolling the dice. All right, let's do an analogy with paint. Now, if you mix the blue with the blue, you're gonna get blue. No bones about it, blue's the result. That's what happens when you mix a purebred dog with another purebred dog of the same breed. But if you mix the blue paint with yellow, you'll get some version of green. Notice the ambiguity. 
in that statement. Some version of green? All right, because depending on how much blue you use or how much yellow you use, the green is going to be a different shade. That's what happens with doodles. You're mixing two breeds and the outcome is just not going to be as certain as when you breed two dogs of the same breed. Even dogs of the same litter are different from each other. Look at these two cute doodles from the same mother and father in the same litter. Unfortunately, doodles are often marketed in a way that really can only be reserved for purebred dogs. Many breeders promise certain traits or other attributes that may be present when those puppies come out, but may not be. Now, the only way that you can be relatively sure of certain attributes is by getting a purebred dog. So that's why I say that the challenge with doodles often comes in the owner's expectations versus the reality of the dog. I'm not the only one that feels this way. In addition to the doodles creator, Wally, Fred Campo, vice president of the Labrador Retrievers Club says, doodle breeders hype them as the ideal dog, but every dog in a litter of mixed breed pups is different. There is no predictability in size, temperament, energy level, or coat type. So selling them for thousands of dollars to unsuspecting public as so-called designer dogs, often at prices higher than what a reputable breeder of the purebred dogs would charge, makes no sense. Now, I'm not saying to not get a doodle, and I'm not saying to give up on your doodle if you already have one. I'm saying that you need to adjust your expectations for the variety of options you might get from this mixed breed dog. In my training education with students of my online course, we always say, train the dog that you have in front of you. And it's never been more true than with doodles. Now, you might have anticipated he would be different. You might have expected certain traits based on what the breeder said, but he is what he is, and he's yours to train and love. Now, before we finish today, I wanna to give you a few suggestions on training when it comes to doodles. Now, as you heard me say, they are all different. So it's hard to give you only a few pieces of advice for a wide variety of dogs. But here's what I've seen in my work as a certified trainer. Doodles have a strong need for both mental and physical exercise. Most dogs do, but doodles might need it more than you realize. They tend to have a lot of energy and this can get destructive if not given the proper outlet. Now you're gonna need a schedule that meets these energy needs and it also must be evaluated and readjusted frequently as your doodle grows. It's often hard to find the right balance of the schedule because too much exercise can result in similar frustrating behavior. There's a fine balance that's different for every dog. And once you've found it, it's probably fleeting due to the growth and development. Raising a doodle takes a keen eye and a dedicated owner. The human must commit to problem solving and working to solutions for their dog. Doodles really, really need this type of owner. In addition, because of the intense need for grooming, you're gonna wanna make sure your doodle is extremely comfortable with body handling. Now you should start this from a young age and continue it regularly. I cannot stress enough how much you need your dog to love, and I mean love, being brushed. This is not something you can just muddle through. It's a daily activity. It should be something that you and your dog do together with ease and enjoyment. So this video can get you started on the topic of desensitization to body handling. And this one is great to prepare your dog for those many grooming visits. Now, if you're really an information junkie, you'll like the book called Cooperative Care by Deb Jones. That book can help you with the grooming and body handling process. Now, due to their high energy levels, it's not uncommon for doodles to have a hard time with separation from their favorite humans and settling well in the crate. Now, with time and training, you can work on both of these and create a comfortable routine for your doodle. But a lot of doodle owners need to consult a professional to help them through this. I have a lot of students with doodles working through my online course. So here are a few takeaway points. Number one, research your breeder carefully so you minimize the wild card factor of what temperaments you'll get. You can use this video to help uh, learn more about choosing a breeder. Number two, plan ahead to secure a groomer and know the cost. This is just as important as saving for your vet bills and knowing your vet ahead of time. Start this research now. Number three, become skilled in cooperative care so you can prepare your dog for grooming and you can do the necessary brushing. This means, positive body handling practice from day one. Number four, consider professional training assistance to work through common behaviors like separation distress, lacking crate confidence, and overexcitement. It's okay to ask for help. You aren't expected to know everything, and dogs speak a different language than we do. Call for a translator. Number five, 
adjust to your expectations and expect the unexpected and resolve to work it through for the safety and comfort of your doodle. You don't know what shade of green you're gonna get, so go into this with the appropriate mindset and you will do well. So bottom line, <laughs> if you have a doodle and you're struggling with any of these things, I might be able to help you or I can direct you to someone who can. Just reach out in my Facebook group or comment below. I hope today's video didn't make you mad. I'm sure a lot of you will tell me you have doodles who have none of the challenges I mentioned. I love that for you. I just want to tell everyone else that it may be a little different. Your results may vary. All right, that's all the doodling we can do for today. In the comments below, tell me what kind of doodle you have and how's that daily brushing going? <laughs>